Welcome to Tio Yadiyatra, which is the launch exhibition of the 2020 Art Bank of South Africa Art Collection. Hi, um, my name is Nkosinati Kumete. I am the acting project manager of the Art Bank of South Africa. The Art Bank of South Africa is a project of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture under its Mzanzi Golden Economy Strategy and is hosted by the National Museum Bloemfontein. The story goes that the idea was uh, founded by then Minister of Arts and Culture, Minister Ben Gubane, when he visited the Canadian Art Bank in 1990, between 1994 and 96. He saw this model um, of the Art Bank when he visited there and he wanted to create such a model in South Africa. So the project itself has been in the making since then. The project officially launched, I think, in 2017 here at the National Museum Bloemfontein um, under the minister, um, the current minister of arts and culture, Minister Natim Teto. And um, because of the partnership that exists with Olivine's um, Art Museum, we launch um, a collection annually here at the Art Bank, which is what has taken us here. Mm -hmm. So to contextualize the statement I just made now, the vision and mission of the Art Bank is to acquire um, artworks from young um, contemporary um, visual artists, um, South African artists specifically in the main, and um, with the intention of leasing um, and selling those artworks. The vision being really to stimulate the culture of appreciation. Um, if I put it in the simplest way, you know, if you are able to uh, see artworks on a regular basis, the idea is that you'll be able to develop a sense of appreciation for the art by extension, um, start to acquire it. So uh, the, the, the project itself aspires through um, its strategies of buying, leasing and, educa and educating um, to achieve that. So annually we send a public call to artists across the country we request artists to send in their submissions to us. Um, they can send as many as five artworks. We um, have a committee that sits to sift through the submissions and at the discretion of the committee, we can acquire um, up to five um, artworks. But of course, that once again is at the discretion of the committee. So once that process of acquiring or rec those recommendations are made, uh, those recommendations are then given to the National Museum of Bloemfontein Council for ratification. I should mention this, that the acquisitions committee is made out of independent um, visual art practitioners who will be um, art historians, um, curators, and they come from different um, um, regions of South Africa. The intention there being the fact that they will know the discourse and the practice of those particular areas. So when they eventually do come together, they are then able to uh, you know, bounce and sound each other in terms of the artistic practice in those different regions. So once they have made their recommendations, they then will hand over those to us. In turn, we'll hand um, those recommendations to, um, through the Office of the CEO to the National Museum Council to ratify, meaning that the council has a responsibility to say, maybe this artwork 
you know, for whatever reason might not be suitable. But you know, there are certain things that they look for. Um, you know, uh, for an example, the art bank being a public project, they look for things that the work does not offend religiously, politically, etc. Such things are taken into account. Um, so they have the discretion of that kind of oversight. So once they've applied their mind, they then um, would give us their feedback and in turn will engage the artist. Recommendations of council have been given us to us as the executives. We then start the processes or the logistics of you know, getting the artworks from all over the country to uh, Bloemfontein. Upon um, receiving all these artworks, we then start with the processes of setting up an exhibition of this nature. So where we are now um, is um, launching the 2020 um, art collection. And we aptly um, titled the exhibition, or the title of the exhibition is called um, Tiro Yadiatla, meaning Kasi Tswana meaning in Sebenzi Zandla, the Sizul, or that which is made by hands in English. So the idea being that we really are trying to uh, celebrate the artistic practice, you know, um, in looking into the collection itself, we realize the diverse uh, application um, in terms of technique, the diverse application in terms of subject matter, and I think the, the idea was to reflect and really be in a position to celebrate um, that artistic practice. Hence the, 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 the time to your idea became kind of significant to be able to draw in the viewer to, um, as a starting point to allow the viewer to have an entry level into unpacking the show um, to allow the viewer into um, a degree of, um, as a starting point, to be able to say, this is, this is what the country, um, if you take a quick survey, is doing right now. Now, of course, there's always a challenge because these artists have not met each other. This artist, you know, um, individually would not know what the other one is doing in their individual, um, you know, regions. But of course, their area of interest is not necessarily the same. So, you know, for us then, the interesting part is how do you then marry these narratives um, um, in a sense that um, you don't force the narrative to individual works, but you are still able to create um, a uh, subtitle for lack of a better word, that you are still able to read through the work and walk out with a sense of the artistic practice um, in the country now. In this room, um, just right behind me, um, you know, we are showcasing three um, artists. Um, I'm choosing this wall for one specific reason. In the main, um, this art is called um, Ohu Benga because it's a significant part of the project. Um, Ohu is a, um, an artist who was born in Nigeria, um, who is currently um, a citizen of South Africa now. Now, why, why am I choosing that work specifically? It's for the reasons that although the, um, the project itself wants to, the project wants to limit itself to South African artists, but once you are naturalized, we are able to um, um, work with you um, regardless of where you are born. So hence, I'm choosing this specific work because I think our relationship um, with him over the years have been of great significance. He, in the main, um, looks into heritage buildings. And um, this one right behind me is of the National Museum Bloemfontein, which is the one, um, um, the organization that is housing the art bank. But I'm also particularly interested in the manner that he handles his medium. He's not very photographic in, in the manner in which he handles his uh, medium, but actually the, 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 the choice of colors, you know, the texture and the kind of loose uh, mic making 
although you get the sense of control to be able to illustrate the the the, the mark making but you still get the, the the freedom that that the artist is freely expressing himself and and although you get the sense that he really wants to portray this kind of monumental building but there's that kind of freedom and that playfulness um, about the technique and it really is a significant work for us right next to it like i said uh, i'm gonna limit myself on this wall on these two is um, lizo pemba lizo pemba um, of interest um, to everyone would be that he's a third generation um, um, a member of the uh, uh, i think a grandson of george pemba um, the legendary George Pemba that we, you know, um, celebrated George Pemba who was a painter from the Eastern Cape. And I think for, for, for us, the interest of seeing how that is translated because, you know, if, if you did not know, um, you know, that this is Lizzo Pemba's work, you would, you would be easily forgiven for thinking that it's George Pemba's work. Because the way he renders his technique, um, the way he renders his subject matter, which is basically social commentary, which is what his um, grandfather was um, known for, you know. Um, and I think that, that kind of juxtaposition is of interest to us to see how George Pemba has influenced his grandson in rendering um, his artistic practice. We moved into this room and right behind me is a very um, significant um, artwork by an artist called um, Franz Poco. Um, of significance with this artwork is, you know, the, 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 the message for us is really to note that, you know, the saying that says um, artists are mirror society. And I think, you know, there is no better artwork to reflect that. The artist um, in the artwork, you know, depicts, you know, a number of um, statues, and um, you know, um, floating, you know, above them is the coronavirus, you know. And I think for me um, and for us, when we were reflecting on this work, it was of great significance to be able to note and record this time. Because, I mean, without a doubt, you know, this, 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 this period will pass. But I think, you know, um, with all that it has brought, the challenges it has brought for everyone, you know, the loss of income, the loss of human life, the, 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 the challenges that this coronavirus has brought um, and forced on, actually, on all of us, um, is kind of mirrored and recorded um, um, on this particular artwork. And I think for me, for the artist to have the insight to record that and to juxtapose that with you know something that appears to be static which is statues something that assume you know one would assume would live forever which is statues you know um, kind of mirrors what the residues would potentially be because the loss of life the loss of you know um, jobs you know, will be felt for a long time to come for many others.